Are ketogenic diets nutritionally adequate for adolescents and children? Well, it turns out a new study suggests that they are. And this could have significant impact because there are some concerns about the use of ketogenic diets in kids. So let's get into the details. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And, and in today's episode or today's video, I want to talk about this paper, Assessing the Nutrient Status of Low-Carbohydrate, High-Fat Diet Meal Plans in Children a hypothetical case study design. And this was put out by, by Karen Zinn and colleagues from uh, New Zealand. And so first of all, it's a hypothetical case study design. I think that's important, right? These weren't um, interventions that followed kids for decades to see if they de developed nutritional deficiencies. Instead, this was uh, designing specific ketogenic meal plans or low-carb, high-fat meal plans and assessing their nutritional content and then comparing that to guidelines for um, adolescents and children to see if it meets all the, the specific criteria. And this is important because a lot of the data we have on keto diets in kids comes from the epilepsy world and from seizure worlds. And um, a lot of those initial diets were sort of meal replacement shakes and kind of not real foods. And there's some concern about nutritional inadequacies um, with that. And also we actually did a, 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 another video recently looking at in adults, um, the risk of plant-based versus meat-based diets and nutritional deficiencies. And it, it was a little hard to know exactly what those meant. And, and um, it wasn't the most rigorous of evaluations of nutritional um, adequacy or deficiencies, whereas this was, was much more rigorous. So like I said, what they did was they designed different meal plans and did a very specific analysis of the nutritional content. So some of the sample meal plans, you know, you'd eggs on toast, um, and it was a low carb five seed bread, five seed bread with some butter and um, two regular boiled eggs with some baked beans and cheddar cheese. And then there was, I love they had a morning tea. So you can see this was not done in America because we don't talk about morning tea, but maybe like a morning snack, also called tea with some fruit and cheese. And then uh, lunch, which was a low carb sandwich with salami. Again, some of the low carb bread with some butter, mayonnaise, avocado, spinach, cucumber, cheddar cheese, and tomato. And then afternoon tea or afternoon snack that had some seed crackers with peanut butter. Um, and then dinner, pork chops, cauliflower mash, and vegetables. Um, and, then, and then in addition to dinner was supper, which I assume from my American standpoint was like a dessert, um, which was yogurt and nuts. So perfectly reasonable uh, low-carb meal plan um, that sounds pretty delicious to me. And I, I could see people being able to comply with pretty easily. And that was one example. There were, there were other meal plans um, and then they did the nu nu nutrient analysis. And not only did they did, do total energy and carbohydrates, sugar, starch, protein, fat, saturated fat, trans fats, MUFAs, PUFAs, right? They did all that. Plus they looked at fiber, thiamine, uh, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, B12, folate, calcium, iron, magnesium, zinc, sodium, potassium, phosphorus, selenium, and iodine. Whoosh. They looked at all of those and compare them to the, the guidelines. And, and their conclusion was it was a completely um, nutrient adequate uh, diet. And, and that's really important, again, because of this sort of misconception that maybe kids or adolescents shouldn't be doing a keto diet because of the nutrient deficiencies. Now, what this wasn't was, you know, all keto bread, all fat bombs, um, you know, uh, super high fat shakes and things like that, right? That That's not necessarily what this was. Um, so this was a, a well-planned and well-thought-out uh, ketogenic meal plan. But I guess the point being that it is absolutely um, possible and probably not all that difficult even to have a completely nutritionally replete, nutritionally adequate meal plan for adolescents and kids and certainly for uh, adults as well. Um, so I think this was an interesting... Um, study, again, hypothetical. It wasn't following kids long-term, but there's no reason to suspect that there would be any nutritional defici deficiencies based on this pattern. Now, could you do the same for a vegan diet? Actually, no, right? You couldn't get adequate B12. Um, you might not get adequate iron. Um, there, are, you, know, you might not get adequate omega-3s, but you can supplement with those, right? So that's understanding that even a a nutritionally inadequate diet, like a vegan diet, you can supplement to make up for that as long as you have access to the supplement. So in the industrialized world, that's not really a problem. As you get into the lower socioeconomic 
countries where those types of supplements are not readily available, then it certainly becomes more, more of a concern um, and a reason for potential complication then. But so, you know, I don't want to just focus on the ketogenic diet and say that's the only, you know, diet. Of course, you can, you can, you can work with other diets to find similar um, nutritional adequacies and supplement where needed, again, as long as those supplements are required. From my standpoint, it just makes a lot more sense to follow a nutritionally adequate diet, um, which, you know, an omnivorous type diet will uh, will accomplish that for most people. So anyway, very interesting study. Um, hats off to, to Dr. Zinn and colleagues for doing this, and um, hopefully you found this helpful. And uh, if it did, you did, click the thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Take care, everybody. Mm-hmm.